welcome to Henry B Motivation. For those of you who have not subscribed to my channel, click the right button below. And uh, today's topic, how we take you around this video. So that something new can be born, right? You have to surrender. If you cannot submit, you cannot die. If you cannot die, you cannot be reborn. And this is what happens during an experience of awe. And that's why it can be terrifying until you learn to surrender, until you learn to let go. If you're feeling helpless right now, become helpful. You can't simultaneously be helpful and helpless. You know, if you're feeling... It is important in the area of motivating yourself, it's important to know why you're doing it. Because that mind will say... Anxiety, fear, helplessness, you know that's your ego? Because it's, it's about you. You've made it about you. If you can get out of you and serve someone else, there's no such thing as anyone starts life, you know, behind the start line. I look at myself as equal to everyone that I'm in a room with, and the separation between where I want to go and where I am is my work ethic. So my mindset is always that anybody can be great. I want to be the greatest ever at what I do. So everything I touch, everything I pour my time and talent into, I don't think about being great. I think about how can I be the greatest? And that takes a huge amount of introspection. It takes a huge amount of self-reflection and honesty. Um, and it also takes humility because you have to ask for help in order to be the greatest. You become one with the universe, right? You are part of the universe, but guess what? The universe is a part of you. You have Carl Sagan's notion that I am a way for the cosmos to know itself. And this recontextualization of the self uh, blasts new tunnels between the mind and the other. It ticks the box of Tolstoy in the sense that you have find a way of bridging the finite with the infinite. And that is what a mystical experience is. But you were born to do something great mm. with your life. And that's easy to forget when you're, you're going, I'm in scarcity mode, I need to survive. I mean, that sounds great, Ed, but like, you don't understand. I'm, I'm unemployed. I'm, I've got rent that I'm gonna have to start paying again. I understand that, and I'm saying one of the pathways out is you remind yourself, I was born to do something great, big ways and small ways. And some of the smallest great things you will ever do in your life are the most important. You think about the archetype of a superhero, they always have an obstacle to overcome. There's always the height of climax. And I don't believe that I'm so great that I don't you know, um, have the ability to go through difficult circumstances. I think it's necessary in order to realize your greatness. Because when you're tested, you are given the ability to have a testimony. So you can't have a testimony without a test. And just, um, you know, in my life, I've been tested significantly. And each time, um, you know, I've, I've developed a new skill set or a new muscle to help me run this race. You react to thoughts, that's a fact. Here's another great fact. You can change your thoughts anytime you like. And if you change your thinking, it changes your entire life. So for instance, we're all saying, I'm stuck at home. I go, no, I'm safe at home. You change one little word, it changes everything. So we're not stuck, we're not locked in, we're not trapped, we're not in prison. It's not an apocalypse. It's not Armageddon, but if you start to use those words, it begins to feel exactly as if it is that case. An experience of awe and rapture or poetic rhapsody ticks all these boxes. Feelings of interconnection, feelings of communion with the infinite, feelings that you are part of love, something larger than yourself, feelings of ecstatic well-being, uh, feelings of a noetic truth that's deeper than the literal grid of the everyday. If an experience has all the, ticks all those boxes, that is considered a mystical experience. You know? And we know that that is healing. People suffering from treatment-resistant depression and treatment-resistant anxiety are given a single dose of psilocybin psychedelic mushrooms in a controlled environment with two therapists in the room. If they have a mystical experience, which a large majority of them do, they are healed of their existential distress. They no longer meet the criteria of depression and or anxiety. Why? Because the whole story of who and what they are has been transformed. But I must say, everyone, we're three, four weeks into this. And it's, it's time now, if you have it, to begin to create these structures around you again. It's time to be growing. It's time to be engaging again. Um, you know, for me, it's about creating more structure when the world isn't giving it to me. I need to create more. So I'm crazy. I'm getting up a half hour earlier than I normally do. Why? Because I know everybody else is getting up an hour or two later. And it's just another thing. I wake up, I go, I'm doing things not everybody's willing to do. 
I mean, your greatest enemy is your enemy. It's the conversation you have in your mind. So the battle that's within is greater than the battle that's in the world. So once you're able to fight that consistently and calm yourself and control yourself and be methodical and specific about how you respond, nothing will surprise you. You're, you're immovable at that point. You won't, you won't waver, you won't, you won't break. Look at your struggle as immersive empathy. Hit the like button and the subscribe button below for more quality content. Thanks for watching Harry B Motivation.